So, well, I'm glad we're pretty much done with our online stuff. Who knows my, what might happen next week, right? So next week, Monday, we have a final. They said that, the reason I'm saying it, that I just got an email that that Proctor, Pro, Proctor U software that our college also uses for online classes for proctoring. In fact, there are some instructors I know using this software for MDC live classes as well. It costs student 30 or something dollars to take the exam using this software. And I know some instructor and some other campuses make it mandatory for students to use. And right now it's not working because of that crowd strike issue that they say is a glitch in their system. So hopefully they'll fix it eventually. So anyways, final will be on Monday. I discussed this already last time on Wednesday, emailed you the uh, recording. I plan to also update the YouTube channel that I have all the lectures for this class posted. Update means to put the rest of lectures, including today's one over weekend on that folder for the YouTube. So you will see everything in it. I think that'd be helpful for people that still behind with homework, right? So you have everything in one place, all the lectures. So it'll save you time preparing, I hope. And um, today I'm gonna discuss the second exercise for the final exam. There'll be two problems. And uh, one exercise I recommended you to look at the problems in this little group. I, in fact, did a few of them last time. So something very similar to this will appear on the final exam. So I really narrow it down for you so you better see and save time preparing for this. And of course, you will have pretty much unlimited amount of time for two exercises. So as long as you need, you can look at. And the second exercise is coming from the story of a geometric series. So there was a formula that we utilized. If you add in terms, let me write exact same letters. I think it's K they used or they used N. So I don't make up any new looking formulas for you. It's a K, yeah, okay. Usually people like to put N, but here in the book they put K. Doesn't matter, you call it K or N, just like variable could be X or could be Y. So it's an infinite series. So that's why the infinity symbol is up there. It says that you add terms one, two, three, four, like here, dot, dot, dot. So you don't have the last term. It continues without the last one. It just goes beyond and so forth. So the sum deals with the first term. So they call it as A index 1. So we start at 1. And then the ratio, common ratio for the series will be raised to the power of 1 less than K. So that's how they treat this. And the sum of this infinite series is given by the formula. And that was amazing fact that we saw infinitely many numbers we add and the sum is finite. And it looks like fraction, first term is a numerator and one minus the ratio and denominator. And what's extremely important to realize that ratio needs to be less than one. It may be negative, so it will be an absolute value less than one. Should be number smaller than one. Then formula works. If it's equal to one or greater than one, 
you cannot use this formula. And usually this series is going to be not convergent, but divergent. Divergent means the sum is infinity or maybe undefined. Some may also be undefined. And one may say, what does it mean, undefined sum? Like one plus two plus three plus four plus five, isn't that infinity? Well, undefined sum, it may be positive or negative, for example. There are various examples, of course. So terms could sign alternate. So it could be plus one minus two plus three minus four. So sum will keep changing its sign but it's still going to increase. If you keep adding those numbers, they'll be larger and larger and larger, but one is positive, the other is negative. And that's why we don't know if it's infinity or minus infinity or something else. That's why <laughs> people say in general, the series is gonna be just divergent, not to get into details because that's what we actually learn in the second part of calculus class. So all we care about is this formula here. And I will ask you to do an exercise using this formula. So for example, how about if I tried the exercise, I think I did like 65, maybe I can do 66. So in this exercise I need to identify. So that'd be the second exercise for the final exam. That's why I'm doing it. And I would recommend you to look at the lecture recordings of this previous class meetings and see how we did this in section three of chapter 12. So in 66, I have to determine the sum four is multiplied by negative one half. So it looks like since it's negative one half, then it's going to be my ratio because you keep multiplying and by negative one half and again and again. So you can right away determine the R, right? The ratio. So you could use this in your formula above. And uh, once I determine that R is equal to one half, I also need to know what is a1, the first term equals to, and to determine it, we have to use the k equal to one, because that's the first term. So it's always going to be for k on the first position equal to one. So I'm going to have to take four and times it by negative one half raised to what power? Looks like I have to subtract one from number one, right? So when I subtract one and one, I get zero. So this whole thing will be negative one half raised to the power of zero, which is one, which means that I multiply four by one. And this is four. So once I know my ratio R, which is in absolute value equal to one half, in other words, less than one, I can use the formula above. So the sum is gonna be equal to the fraction. So let me use another color so you better see this. It's uh, first term four, Right. I'm using this formula above. Four I put on the top and one minus R. So one minus whatever R is, it's a negative one half. Okay. It's gonna be on the bottom. So now I can find the answer. I can extend this here on the bottom and divide four by what? One and one half. Can I write this as a three over two? Some people like to flip three halves because when you divide, 
it's the same as if you multiply by a reciprocal, which is put two on the top, right, and three on the bottom. And this will give you the answer, which is eight over three, or two and two thirds, if you wish. So same thing, doesn't matter how you write this fraction or a mixed number or decimal, it's the same for me. I know they're same things. So no need to bother and panic, just give me the answer. And that'd be all you need for second exercise on the final. So once again, there'll be two problems. First is what I emailed to you and worked out on Wednesday, previous class. And second exercise is similar to problem 66, something like that. So you'll be able to use this formula and to determine what ratio is and what A1 is, and that way you can plug them in the form. And that's it. So homework will be due and I will be very happy if you send it to me by Monday, by email. If not, I can give you a couple of more days. It's okay, but start to put it together. There were not many sections, right? We worked with chapter 12, so they'd be sections 12, 1, 12, 2, 12, 3, 4, and 5. That's why I write it as 12, 1 through 12, 5. You can choose a problem or two from each section and the uh, same problems that I did in class and do it again and make copy on your, I guess, phone or whatever tool you have, scanner, and email it to me, just like you did with a midterm. And I'm still waiting for some people to send me their midterm homework, so send it to me. I just had someone sending me a midterm uh, workout and uh, improved grade by one higher, and that's great. I always have time to give you a chance to improve your grade and to look at it, unless it's done after the deadline. The deadline will be Thursday next week, so we basically have less than a week left for this class so please take it seriously get a good grade and i deserve i think you deserve the best possible grade i don't mind if you send me your midterm again if you want to improve results it's all on canvas and it's still working i just checked the canvas is working everything working the Proctor U is not working, they say, but I, our class is not using it. If you're taking some other class that, say, online class, that expects you to use this Proctor U software, well, there is alternative. You can just schedule an appointment in the lab as a backup and um, take the final in the lab, but not for this class. For this class, you can do it at home or wherever you prefer. Location doesn't matter, right? So I'll expect you to do it by the end of the day on Monday. So next Tuesday, I will grade it and calculate your course grade and post it on Canvas as usual. And then Wednesday next week, we can discuss it. If you want to improve it, I'll tell you what to do. So let me know, or you can email me. I can not tell you your grade, though, by email, but I post it on Canvas. So we can always talk about this when in Zoom class. And again, I don't mind if you submit late work, but again, next week, Thursday is the last day for everything, because on Friday, it'd be too late and on Saturday and after that. So make sure that you take it seriously and I'm sure you're going to do well, right? So that's why I'm going to stop to record this and 
see how you feel if you want to ask any questions.